Libras, welcome. This is your heart spread reading, mid of January, 2022. Heart spread is a love, romance, and relationship reading for, in this case, Libra risings particularly. I'm going to kind of keep in mind what the transit chart looks like for Libra rising, but as it may apply, um, it's definitely about where the Libra energy is uh, in transit in the sky here. Nothing significant exactly in Libra other than, well, big stars and, and uh, asteroids possibly. Uh, but we have to also think about our progress charts when we think about Libra. Uh, I have a Libra moon right now in my progress chart as a Virgo rising and a Sagittarius sun. So it has significance in that way. But I say because I'm going to do a second reading with a different deck because this reading is so uh, straightforward. If this is your reading, well, first of all, the outcome is the iconic Three of Swords. And here, it's no need to uh, get esoteric about it. You're brokenhearted. The outcome is brokenhearted. Um, I get the sense with this person here, with the world, and, you know... The Wheel of Fortune combined, I mean, it's so positive, but you know what it feels, what I just got was opportunistic. They were opportunistic, and they may well have been riding high, you know. Um, also, um, it maybe comes to mind the road to hell is paved with good intentions, because this is their energy in and around love relationships, looking, coming right into the reading. Here you are coming right into the reading with the Six of Wands. I got to say with the Six of Wands, well, I say, I'm going to do a second reading, you know, hang in there if you relate to this at all. Um, this is the bottom of the deck. I do count the King of uh, Swords here to get a good uh, fix. So a little uh, contemplative, very strong King of Swords. Um, the colors and everything with the King of Swords match up with the Knight of Swords from there, from them. But I see this, you went into this relationship in a very strong way, kind of a, knowing what you wanting, wanted. Um, it could have even been a little mercenary, and, and I don't want to lose everybody, but this could be a little shallow energy of just looking at the surface. Of, it could be very sexual too, the Six of Wands, and this is your energy going right into this reading. And you're probably very drawn to this person because anyone that's in the world energy, you know, they're going to be attractive. They're going to be at the top of their game. They're going to be, you know, um, you know, there's just that vibe that comes off. And wow, you know, coming with that, with Jupiter energy here, Jupiter going into Pisces right now, they've got two degrees. It's, uh, where's that for you? Oh, your sixth house. So you've been getting hammered for like ever well over 10 years um, with the daily routine. That's like you, you tooth and nail, you can't scratch out a solid daily routine. Like it might just slip between your fingers. And now it might get easier. Um, uh, full moon's gonna move to 21 degrees Neptune. So it's gonna be a really mature, maybe by now we all figure out it's my seventh house. I think I'm there. Now after like 15 years of this stuff, we've kind of figured out how to get a grip on our daily routine and that's our health right so um jupiter's just gonna probably bring a lot of could be healing too with jupiter i think um jupiter heals so um you know you're coming in with the to me it's this energy very very enthusiastic the way you feel about them is the queen of cups is very sincere you really give them your love I mean, going from the Six of Wands, this is you kind of in and around love and relationships, and then suddenly, kind of more specifically, how are you relating to, your, to this person on your mind? Boom, you're just like falling for them. Like if there was a cross watcher, uh, you know, there, let there be no doubt that the Libra, you fell uh, like had like off your horse, you know, for them. Um, and now how you get to this place of you being in the nine of swords energy and this is advice from spirit for this relationship and then this is their advice from spirit in this relationship you know sometimes it's what we learn from a relationship which i believe is the case here 
doesn't look like this is going to go forward. This is, to me, the most important card in this little reading. And this is the advice from Spirit for the relationship as a whole. You know, and it's to realize that the relationship was born out of, you know, could be like a, some combination of lust and ego. And um, it, they may have seen you as some kind of conquest. Um, it, it could run kind of deep. There's always going to be soul messages here. But when you have the nine of swords, you know, spirit doesn't want us to suffer. And this is suffering. But I believe this is like you're, we're being asked at this time to sit with these feelings and not run away from them and is really feel what's going on. You know, which is heartbreak, which has come about because, you know, the foundation here uh, was not solid. And it was based on this devil energy, which is... Uh, egoistic and selfish and um you know yes it's passionate and um but it, it i don't read like the capricorn energy here you know if it's capricorn involved it, it is what it is we do what i would see here though would be pluto and venus and they're in capricorn for sure it depends on where that is in your chart and if you are libra rising then that's your fourth house so that's uh that can be the energy when with venus here and pluto and mercury's going to come back and now the sun's getting ready to cross pluto there's a lot of action right there that pluto now in capricorn to me that's the devil because the devil always carries to me uh, a lot of the energy of um the eighth house you know where you have uranus if you're labor rising for the last three or four years now and three or four more um so my ninth house but so you could be that could be bringing all all kind well that could be esoteric it's a higher mind you could be why are watching tarot you could be uh an interest over the last few years more and more of uh you know anything esoteric uh, astrology tarot witchcraft uh anything hidden like that um but in terms of this relationship you know you end up in this um three of swords energy so kind of my sense of it was, and i just read over top, is I shuffle a little bit, but I pre-shuffled this other deck. It's just the uh, Art Nouveau Golden Tarot. And uh, what I want to do is kind of just do another reading entirely, but off of this Nine Swords. So we're asking Spirit, you know, what is it here? Because do you know? I mean, this is where I'd love for you to comment. It's just you and I. Just, <laughs> oh, it's hardly anyone watching, huh? But if someone gets something out of it, I, you know, I feel like I've done what I need to do. But uh, focus on this Nine of Swords, which I really feel is like if Spirit's saying this, it's like this relationship, which doesn't look successful, and this may be difficult for you. It's like a spiritual challenge um, to, to embrace this energy and really sit with it, like in, um, to really get find out what it's telling you this experience here which is probably something that at least relates to past experiences if not even very directly or you know there could be uh, you some kind of pattern that's what we're looking for with the nine of swords here I just want to do four card reading many clarifiers as necessary drilling down on this advice from spirit now for you what do you learn about this relationship um, and I'm talking about for your spiritual growth your emotional growth you know it's not all for naught it, to get closure that's what closure is I think I mean the person you could get closure the person could be passed on because I think the closure is is closure for us you know, emotionally, understanding it intellectually is one thing, and then, like, dealing with it emotionally, Cancer Moon here, it's quite another. That can be quite a takedown, you know. And, you know, you really, with this Queen of Cups, I mean, you really put it all out on the line. So, you know, I understand if you're still following along, this one really hurts. You know, it's like, you know what, I just gave everything and what I get, you know. So you come in and 
with the seven of pentacles energy you get the really good seven pentacles you can see i think that this uh kid here is kind of looking down uh at at his coins and it's looking at when you have this energy it's about reciprocation you know looking at the crops looking at the energy you put in what have you got back and you kind of get the sense when i have this energy sort of representing you your energy around what you need to look at in terms of a uh, emotionally what's uh, so upsetting at a deeper spiritual level that this breakup kind of represents um, is going to be about this issue of reciprocation so um, this is exactly the kind of thing if you carry it forward in now with you because <clears throat> obviously you gave everything and you got you know stabbed in the back or something right so you know, this is kind of like, well, I'm not going to let that happen again. And it's like, yes and no. But I think that's what it means to understand intellectually and then emotionally work through it. Because otherwise, if we go forward, then we're in this wounded warrior. And our actions are just going to lead to more of the same. Uh -huh. So, in other words, we've got to go back to, um, you know, this here at the beginning of a relationship i mean it is that self-love and everything is very being very aware if someone doesn't reciprocate it's usually pretty obvious it's why you know your friends can always tell you you know and they're seldom wrong i mean really you think about it, it's like you have a good friend and you love and trust and you know and they know you love you and they tell you oh, that woman's no good that guy's no good for you i mean nine times out of ten it you know it is because why it's a pretty obvious if you look at things here with this pinnacle point of view, you know, don't listen to what they say. Look at what they do, you know, uh, look at what's reality here. Um, and very much speaks to this is in a crossing position now of what you don't want, what will block you here. And that's to move ahead without, look, he's kind of, you can see, I think, too, he's kind of looking back, looking very... He's looking like, damn it, you know, it's not over. I'm going to get back in there. You know, and so you can kind of see here, you're sort of thinking about it, what you think you need to, right? Really consider, like, you know, why are you having these reciprocation problems? And, you know, I've got sun in conjunct moon in my chart, and it's because you give everything. And it's like, really, and if you're like me, you're like, of course I give everything. That's what it's all about. <sighs> it's so tough, you know? Um... But they need to come back, you know. In Venus energy and adult love—it's—it's it's about reciprocation. It's really not unconditional. Venus not unconditional love, you know. That Venus not love for children—it doesn't really represent that. It represent the daughter in certain aspects, but you know, uh, it's about this adult, and and it is a reciprocal love. You know, you you give uh, unconditional love to like an infant you know, or a child, right, uh, and not you knowing really represented by Venus energy, so it's probably something along those lines, and you know, it's like usually going back to really not feeling good enough, and feeling like you got to do more, you know, and if, if you're a Libra, it's like you're really wanting to balance, I'd say like, Libra's like the one sign that they will really get upset if if they discover that you love them more than they love you. And I was trying to tell my friends, and so when they maybe a breakup comes from a Libra, a lot of times I've been there, comes out of left field, you know, because they, maybe they don't talk about it and stuff, uh, but deep down there just becomes a feeling that's not balanced. And, it, and like I'm a Venus of Scorpio, it's kind of ideal would be for me if they kind of love me a little bit more than I love them, you know. Um, but you really want that balance here. Um, and I think what going forward here, when you look at what you get, which is the Queen of uh, Swords, and you see the scales here, this is just kind of what I'm talking about. This is the advice from Spirit now, is to become the highest version of a Libra. And really kind of a, um, a command with your Aries energy, you know, uh, move into any Aries energy and assert yourself and assert your um, worth and your boundaries. The Queen of Swords can be very, you know, outspoken here. So 
So, and then you have the tower, and that's uh, the future. And, you know, I've seen the tower a lot lately. It's coming in, and it's asking people um, to sort of do a trust fall into the universe. That Uranus energy up there in your eighth house uh, for Libra Risings. Uh, which is square in Saturn, where a lot of the pressure is coming. And um, it sort of just kind of let the tower fall. And that would kind of go back to the accepting this uh, heartbreak, really going into it, not running away from it, working through it. And, you know, coming out of it uh, with some kind of command, I would say, you would when you come into this tower energy, like you're able to kind of accept the tower falling. You know, because the worst thing you can do is if the tower was here, it'd almost be like it was reversed, and I'd be like trying to prevent the tower from falling. Uh, and that's not, um, you know, uh, usually helpful, right? You might as well, uh, you know, um, not try to hold back, you know, fate. And that's what that is a tower coming in. And in this case, it's just this relationship. So by taking this advice and becoming this. Uh, very strong energy here, um, commanding uh, in, in, in energy, you know, divine feminine energy and Libra energy, you could say, at the highest level, the scales, the swords here, mature, um, assertive even, much more assertiveness. You know, Libras are known to be the diplomats of the zodiac. And this doesn't mean you, you go around you don't have to go around meeting people with the tip of your sword, but, you know, uh, it's being a lot, you don't go along, get along. You know, you're not just going to be nice just to be liked. You're you're not going to be so other-focused like Libra. Libra's the seventh house to other. You're going to be able to balance that and focus more upon your own, like, uh, uh, needs, desires, and uh, you know, at least at least the, the scales at least weigh yourself in there uh, e equally to them. You know? and I think that that would be the best way to deal with this pain you know, of whatever's going on here with this uh, relationship. Liebert's, um I know it wasn't like a fun reading, but you know, hit the likes. We try to get it out to other people. I, and tell me, I hope it's helpful somehow. Especially, uh, let me know what's going on in your houses. Uh, if you're not a Libra rising, you sort of get an idea of how it works, uh, where the energy is, especially that uh, Capricorn energy of Pluto and Venus. It's, in terms of love and relationships, it's a hammer right now, one way or another. It's a deepening, ripening, breaking, opening love energy, guys. So do uh, subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate the help. Thank you, guys.